All right, everyone, I know this is quite the look I have going on. I am going to go wash the Z in preparation for a full detail. Quick disclaimer, I literally have not washed a car in two years, which is when we last got the GT3 RS and I gave that a thorough wash and just haven't done it since. I'm not saying that to be like, oh, I'm too good to wash my own cars. It's just life happens and it, I think, makes a lot more time, makes a lot more sense for me to spend my time working and trying to make money than washing a car. Um, so I'm gonna be detailing the Z though. I figured that for what that car needs, I mean, the paint, like we talked about in the last video, isn't, it's pretty rough, at least for my standard. So I do wanna go through and do that one myself just because it'd probably cost, I don't know, maybe around 600, 800 bucks to do that with somebody else. So I'm gonna be trying out some new chemicals today. I pretty much exclusively use Shine Supply. I've been using them for, I mean, years. And Jeremy's a really cool guy over there. His products are amazing. Not really too big a fan of chemical guys for like polishes and waxes. They just don't really tend to last as long. So I'm gonna be trying to do, I think, classic cut or flat top for the cutting portion. I will unfortunately probably have to do a two-step polish and hit it with some burnout on like a finishing pad to really make the black paint pop. And this is where it gets all new for me. Typically I use like a sealant like Daddio. I'm a big fan of just doing sealants and waxes. Haven't really gotten into the whole ceramic coating stuff because when that really came out, I was already kind of not really detailing anymore. So I got, I got the clutch silica spray, which is supposed to be like a sealant substitute and it will actually work on like multiple different surfaces, which is kind of cool and why I got it. Uh, for some reason, my daddy-o sealant kind of separated, I think just sitting in the garage for so long. So funny enough, I actually have to go over to my mom's house to wash the car because I moved about a year and a half ago and never really brought my detailing stuff over with me. And so my garage is just kind of a mess and don't really have spare room for like a pressure washer and stuff. So I hope my pressure washer will actually even run because that's a gas powered one and I haven't ran that thing in a long time. I hardly ever changed the oil on it and it like shoots flames and backfires like crazy when I um, power it off. So it will be interesting to say the least. Uh, I did get some touch up paint with me because I don't think that the Z paint is gonna come back to life 100%. I still think I'm gonna have to get a new front bumper, but uh, with that all being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get to my mom's house. I will film a quick before of the car and I'm just gonna do a quick wash, clay bar, and then might even start the polishing today, but we will see. So I will catch you guys at the house. All right, guys, here's a look at the Z. Let me get the lights on in here. Considering I drove this thing 1,500 miles back from Texas and then put 500 miles on it since, it looks pretty freaking good. But let's kind of get a little idea of like the reflection. It's not bad, definitely I think it's savable. I'm just worried about, you can see we have like some chips up there and um, just swirls kind of everywhere. Hard to see in this lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and start this guy up and then pull it out. And uh, cannot believe I'm about to do this. I haven't, uh, man, detailed in so long. So the cold start for this car is pretty weak. I have a Tome exhaust on the way. I was kind of nervous about getting the Tomei because I've heard that it is like the, the epitome of like Nissan VQ trumpet sound, which I really didn't want. But I don't know. I had a hard time picking an exhaust I liked that wasn't crazy expensive. Let's get this cold start. Man, it's so quiet. Ah. It's like sad how quiet it is, but yep, sounds pretty good. There's my mom's new car, GTS Mercedes. That thing is fun, really happy for her that she got that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Not gonna lie guys, this is getting pretty nostalgic for me. Not just because it's a Z, but again, I haven't washed my car in a long, long time. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. Probably not gonna film too much like outside just because uh, I am on a pretty tight schedule, trying to beat the sun. And then uh, I also want to get as much of this done as I can, 
because I typically don't have the time to be doing this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all situated and go from there. Okay, so quick check-in, I'm like out of breath. I just finished claying the whole car and it already looks way better. I wanna get a few shots of me claying it so you can hear how bad the paint was. It was super rough, but honestly, I'm like I'm running out of daylight and my pressure washer decided to like die on me today. So that was not easy messing with that, but it's looking really good so far. I've done all the glass and all the painted panels. There was an insane amount of rust that was on the rotors, like when I was spraying it with the wheel cleaner, which I'd never seen before, but definitely the paint is now soft to the touch and already looks a little bit brighter and more rejuvenated. So I'm really excited to see what's gonna look like with polishing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process. I did actually bring my one and a half inch polisher today to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the hood, I think as usual, and try to figure out what kind of um, setup I'm gonna do. Cause I mean, looking at the paint, it just, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. And it just kind of has some like, you know, sw swirls and hazing, so. I think I'm gonna hit this with some classic cut before I take it all the way to flat top. So I should always start off with a um, less abrasive compound. But I'm gonna go ahead and have like a whole mess of stuff over here. So it's kind of a little annoying. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, kind of clean up my work area a little bit and then get going on this. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this turns out. And I will check back in after the first um, test spot. Okay, so we are on now day two and a half of the detail. I'm about 15 hours in at this point. Right now I'm just polishing the glass with burnout. The whole car has been two-stepped aside from the doors, roof, and hood. So I'm gonna be going back and doing that. I'm also gonna be polishing the door jams just because those are a little bit um, messed up as well. And then I'm gonna be hitting the headlights and taillights don't really need like a you know cut they're pretty clear just a quick polish because burnout has some ceramic properties in it that you know may as well do the whole car they need to do a one inch polish on the lip it's pretty messed up so i'm going to try to see kind of what i can do and then start touching things up so once i'm done buffing out the whole car i'll start doing the whole touch up paint on the entire vehicle letting that dry probably doing two or three coats probably three coats of touch up, frankly, just as long as I'm here. Then I need to focus my attention on the interior. The plan for the day is to take out the driver and passenger seats and fully extract them and then really get a thorough deep cleaning on the inside. But that's all assuming that my friend comes through because I don't have an extractor. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else. I'm gonna be probably dressing the engine bay because unfortunately, when I was trying to wash the car, my pressure washer was just completely dying I think I mentioned, but yeah, I mean, it's awesome because this angle you can see just on the, you know, quarter and everything, how that just, that gloss is just so deep and definitely, you know, not having detailed a car in so long, I was kind of like losing hope at first because this was sort of a rough start between the paint being kind of iffy and me having to use such an abrasive compound, but um, it's all coming together. So now it's all worth it and my Tomei exhaust will be here this coming week. So I'll be throwing that on, which should be a nice change. It's kind of a bummer because I do like the dual exhaust tips, but I think I like the Tomei the most out of all the exhaust notes. Um, the bumper does have a little bit of damage like right here. So I'm gonna try to probably just touch that up just to hopefully prevent any further cracking and spreading um, that's the thing with this car is that the previous owner did a number on it. So I'm just going to sort of restore it as best I can. And then maybe in the future, new bumpers and stuff like that. So that's it for now. My back and everything is killing me. It's crazy how out of shape I feel. So I'm going to go ahead and just have some coffee and then kind of get back to it. I'm also going to do the fender liners or fender wells because those look horrible. Oh, and for anybody wondering who, I'm not a detailing expert, so that's a quick disclaimer, but for anyone who doesn't really know much about detailing, what I'm doing is I'm doing flat top for two, um, pa two passes with kind of heavy pressure. 
And then I'm doing no pressure for the second two passes. I'm using speed six. And then I'm going through with burnout and I'm doing no pressure four passes and I'm letting it dry for about two to three panels worth of polishing. So maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then that's allowing the SI2 to set up as Jeremy at Shine Supply says. And then I'm gonna be, I buff it off. Then I go through and I'm gonna be hitting it with a clutch silica spray, like we talked about before. And that's gonna be applying it after the touch-up paint and letting it set up for 30 to 60 minutes, kind of as long as I can let it go. So that's kind of the process. So um, yeah, for, hopefully it'll help out anybody who doesn't need to do an in-depth detail. All right, guys, I am 23 and a half hours into this detail. I've never detailed a car that has taken nearly this long. I think the previous longest was 16 hours. So this is crazy, um, but the car is looking really good. So let me go ahead and switch views and show you. So pretty much what's taking so long is I'm just having a really bad habit of, I, I keep, as I go through the car, adding more to the list. And I haven't even really touched the interior. Um, but I did lots of touch-up paint. So if you guys recall, there was some damage on the front bumper, which you can kind of see right there. The clear didn't dry as well, but in certain angles, you can't even tell it's there. I did apply the clutch spray, the silica spray, and I'm just gonna wait until I get more light out tomorrow so I can buff that off by the buffing out the glass and everything. So we have a really nice, reflection and you can see in these lights a little bit I think I mean like me just looking I mean I actually did a pretty good job getting out a lot of these swirls um I could have gone a step farther and like wet sanded um but I just really wasn't interested in that but the headlights it's crazy out even though they weren't foggy it still looks so much more crisp when you hit it with a polish. So I did the headlights, tail lights with the one inch polisher, which took a while so I split it up into like three portions. I did end up buffing out the front bumper, even though it was damaged. So I will probably be replacing this just cause it bugs me that it sticks out right there. I'm trying to pop it back into place, but I'm surprised the paint actually came back pretty decently on it. Um, I will be lowering the car on Fortune Autos coming up. So it might not be a bad thing to have a messed up bumper anyway, just while I maneuver that. But I mean, mirrors came out super glossy. I mean, everything looks great. I can't wait to go and focus more on the interior tomorrow, but I mean, I'm just gonna kind of be buttoning it up, which it feels good to finally say that. I definitely could have finished this earlier had I wanted to, which I did want to, but at the same time, when you're this far into something, I'm just sort of in the field of like, you know, do it right. Um, it's funny, like looking at the roof, there's some weird like pitting, which I don't like this stuff, which I don't think it's pitting, but it kind of, it's not really coming out, which is weird. Um, and normally I don't touch the paint guys, of course, um, but it's a clean car, so I don't think it's causing any damage. Um, have to get that spot, which I actually want to get right now. So this is what I mean, is where it's like, every time you look at the car, you kind of find a spot that you missed. Um, quick note too, I used to use like chemical guys, microfibers and stuff, and they were nice, but honestly, for the money, I mean, these Costco ones have been decent. So not really too much to complain about there, but it, it is surprising, I guess, you know, how well the car popped. These are pretty much all the pads I was using and rotating through. Um, I had a couple more I was using that I put away, but um, use the Adam's little, I don't know if it's like one inch or one and a half inch, but use that and some compressed air. And definitely, I mean, considering I haven't touched a car detailing wise and then I mean, I don't know, it's been years. Last time was actually two years ago, um, two and a half years ago for my 886, which I don't think that ever debuted on, on the channel. Um, if not, I'll maybe upload some footage 
of that car if you guys want. I did a full initial D Panda Trano swap with all the JDM parts. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, the car, I will be having to refinish the wheels. So I'm gonna be sending those off to powder coat and to have them like resurfaced, I guess, pretty soon. Um, Cause it just kind of bugs me seeing the curb rash considering I haven't really curbed a set of wheels in my life. But yeah, I'm really happy with the progress. Debating on if I'm gonna tint it or not. If I do end up drifting this car, then I will not tint it. But if by some chance I don't end up drifting it cause I fall in love with it too much and don't want to see it get banged up, then we'll go from there. This would be kind of a hard car to justify having though if I don't drift it, so I probably will. But yeah, it does look good. So really happy with the results. And um, yeah, I will show you guys an updated clip when it's out in the sun tomorrow. I am having some issues with that sticker on the middle. So hopefully I'll get that all figured out. But for now, I'm gonna clean my pads and call it a day. All right guys, so it's the next morning and I just pulled the car out in the sun to kind of see the progress. Cause with black cars, especially, it always looks really good in the shade, but getting out into the sun is a whole other thing. And I am really happy with how it turns out. I mean, I can't believe this is the same car. I'm not done with it yet. I still need to do the inside of it and like the windshield's a little dirty. But the main reason for pulling it out right now was just to make sure I didn't uh, miss any of like the clutch silica spray. So, I mean, the touch of paint looks great on the front bumper and everything. I mean, this reflection is just absolutely incredible. I, like I said, can't believe it's the same car. I mean, it's just so deep. It just shows, I guess, you know, what all that poor maintenance can do to it. But man, I mean, just look at that shine. And in typical black car fashion, I'll take it out for a drive and it'll be dirty in about one minute. But man, I think black cars, without a doubt, look the best when they're freshly cleaned. So I still need to go through, I'm gonna go and dress the engine bay. Um, and yeah, so it's looking really good so far. Really happy with the progress.